Hi, welcome back to AI News. My name is Ethan, and today we have another special guest, Jessica Martinez, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, which district you're running for? I'm running for the 56th uh, Assembly District. Okay. Uh, would you mind tell us a little bit about yourself and then uh, which uh, cities you're representing? Okay. Well, we are, the cities I'm representing go, they're kind of like all along the 60 freeway and the 605. So if you come from Pico Rivera, Whittier, City of Industry, El Monte, South El Monte, I should say, uh, and then you go further, La Habra, La Habra Heights, mm -hmm. uh, Hacienda Heights, and then you go into Roland Heights, Walnut, and uh, Diamond Park. Oh, just around us. Yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> just on the other side over there. Yeah. Oh, so okay. we have a, a list of questions that yes. we would like to ask you, and then hope you can uh, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay. So. Uh, Actually, would you mind just tell us a little bit about yourself, like how, you, why, are, why are you running and stuff? Yeah. Well, um, first of all, the reason I'm running is because, uh, well, I'll get started really quick. I grew up Catholic, and then later on I became a born-again Christian. Okay. And so a lot of my beliefs, uh, the background for what I believe changed. I began to look at things from a biblical standpoint versus the worldly standpoint, you know, <laughs> all of that, and what the commercials told me and what Cosmopolitan magazine told me, you know, so I began to look at things from God's perspective instead, and it completely changed my worldview, and it was kind of, I was a, uh, kind of, you would call me maybe like a feminist Republican, back in the day before I became a Christian because I believed in free enterprise, I believed the capitalist system worked, but that socially we should just, you know, be free and let everybody pursue whatever they want to pursue. And uh, as long as you uh, want to live in, in peace with the rest of society, we should accept you. And so I was completely on with the liberal no. socialist agenda. But then when I came to know the Lord, um, then I knew that I had to align my thoughts with God's thoughts. How does God see something? So then, um, anyway, going back to uh, getting married, uh, having children. Um, and so right now, my husband and I have been married a little bit over 25 years. Wow. And yeah, I know. But you know what? It's, it's funny because... When, when you tell somebody you've been married for over 25 years, they're like, wow, you know, that's great. But, you know, that used to be the norm. People used to be married forever and ever, you yeah. know? I mean... Yeah, forever until, and ever used, used to mean something. Right, right. <laughs> until death do us part through hard times, through good times. It's not just, well, until I don't love you anymore. You know? <laughs> until, you know, you really irritate me or annoy me a little bit too much. Uh, but, so, uh, we have... Uh, five children between the two of us uh, it's a blended family and um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my school history uh, I got my law degree at uh, Trinity Law School I also have a master's degree in bioethics and in uh, human rights law so it's it's been a really interesting journey to say the least I've also homeschooled I've taught in the public schools and I you know I've had time where I've actually worked for the federal government years ago and I worked for um, private enterprises as well so I kind of have a little bit of what it means I know what it means to to work in all of these different types of places and I think that our government leaders have forgotten that we're people with needs we have families we have businesses and so several years ago I saw what they, the, the state started doing to the church. And I, what I mean by that is in the state legislature, they introduced a bill to try to ban, it was actually one of the end results of this bill would be that it could actually ban the Bible as hate speech because yeah. it talked about homosexuality. You know, the, basically what sin is. The Bible calls out what sin is. So it could have actually banned the Bible. And when I saw that and I saw some of the other things that were going on in the public schools as well, having to do with uh, sex education and how they were really crossing the line, the parental 
line of, of, of control over your children. When I saw that, I was like, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. You know, I need to show me what to do. And so one of my friends invited me to a function, you know, okay. and um, I said, Lord, uh, show me give me a sign that I'm supposed to get involved in politics because I've been to some other political events before and usually I was completely ignored you know nobody paid attention to me I was just like another face and so it was so funny because this one time I said Lord if people greet me and really like welcome me in you know then I'll know it's from you because the other times I was completely ignored. So I went in and as soon as I stepped off the curb, there was this lady. She goes, oh, hi. And she was acted like she was my best friend. She introduced <laughs> me to every single person in the place. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was completely. That's clear sign. Was, so I was like, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll get involved. And then later on, I decided to run for office. Um, when I heard about what was going on in the state assembly, more and more of the bills are just completely against the good of the people. So that's that's why I ran. And then a couple of years ago, I ran for city council in the city of Whittier. Uh -huh. And then um, right now I'm serving as mayor pro tem. Oh, wow. Yeah. So uh, I want to get started with, you were in education field. Yes. And then you were in homeschool. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, what's the difference like from your perspective since you are you've been to both of them and then uh you homeschool your kids too yes is it better or is it which one is better and which one is you get your child brainwashed into a socialist machine well i'll tell you what right now in <laughs> sorry i questioned the, the my answer. question yeah <laughs> Is that a meeting question? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it, 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 you're right. You know, I, I was just listening to this father um, on a YouTube video this morning, and he was talking about how being, he was being accused of indoctrination. You know, oh, you want to indoctrinate your child as a Christian. And, and he's like, well, yeah, brother, I'd rather indoctrinate them into becoming a good person yeah. than to have some, you know, liberal, crazy person indoctrinating them they have them in the schools from like what eight to three o'clock and they have all of that time to introduce those ideas to you know your children that you have no idea uh what's going on and what's being said now what kind of idea well um for example you have the crt going on the critical race theory that's basic uh basically telling children that uh, our society is unequal well, of course society is, is not going to be equal and, and if it's funny, I have another little topic here to go off. I was supposed to sing to a professor. Have you heard of Thomas Sowell? Uh, no. He's, he's an older gentleman. He's like in his 90s now. He's a black um, uh, American and he's very, very well educated, philosopher, economic, uh, economist. I mean, he's very, very well read about history. He's really great. Yeah, he, I think only I heard it from Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro talk about him. Yes. But yes. Uh, other than that, I, I didn't do any research on oh, him. Please tell us a little. He's really terrific and he, he goes through history and he talks about just all of these different things going on in, in um, black society and the misconceptions perceptions and the outright lies. So anyway, uh, this this one particular uh, thing that he was talking about had to do with CRT and how it's just a lie and this is being um, programmed in all of our universities and our, our children are being taught that um, you know, we should have equal outcomes. Yeah. And he was talking about as a professor in the university, he said that the Asian students got the better grades and they were more prepared. And he said, and it was because they worked harder. He said, I used to go to the library, you know, the campus library. He said, and I didn't see any blacks. He goes, I didn't see, I saw maybe a few white people and everybody else in the library was Asian. Yeah. He goes, their success in society has to do with hard work. Yeah. You know, it has to do with how much work are you going to, to put into uh, what your goal is, your aim. Um, and, and I believe that. And that's what our society here in the United States is based upon is how much hard work, work. Yeah. 
how much effort are you going to put in? Um, things are just going to be given to you here. And that's what a lot of our spoiled people in, in, in our society want. They want uh, free stuff. Free stuff, exactly. And that's what brought down the Roman Empire. If you go back, you know, in history, that's what brought down the Roman Empire is that people wanted things for free. Yeah. Getting back to your question, um, I really, what I really liked about homeschooling was that it was flexible. Okay. And what the kids liked about it too was that it was flexible and they had control over how much work and how much effort they actually put into their homeschooling. So for example, if I said, these are your assignments, this is what we need to cover. And as soon as you're finished with all of your work, then you can go play. Yeah. Bam, they work so hard. <laughs> 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 and, and what you find is that in the public school system, there's a lot of wasted time. Yeah. There's so much wasted time. Your kids go in, you have to get everybody in line, you, you go into the classroom, everyone has to get, you know, ready, um, and it takes a long time to get everybody on point. So there's all, there are all of those minutes that are wasted on getting a whole classroom full of kids to do what they're supposed to do. And then, of course, you have those kids who don't who buck the system, and so they're gonna give you trouble. And a lot of times what you end up doing is spending a whole lot of time on those children who don't want to learn, who are just there to cause problems in your classroom. Mm. And so you're wasting all of that time, and you're, the, the rest of the classroom is sitting there waiting for one or two kids to behave. And a lot of energy is being expended on, on those children. And so the benefit of the homeschooling is you don't waste as much time. You have more control over what you think is important to teach your children and you can you can give them the proper values. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the thing is that school mm -hmm. teach you to be academic successful. Yes. And then as parents, we want them to be academically successful. But we the main thing we should teach our kids is you need to be good. Mm -hmm. You need to be moral. You need to have the moral value yes. of that. Uh, in order, success is great. Yes. But being good, being a good person, is the hardest thing. But we, as parents, uh, well, my my kids are not doing anything right mm -hmm. now. But like from when I grow up, my my parents will clap when when I get good grades. Yes. But she won't clap when I do good things. Yeah. So one of the things that I think we parents need to do that's very different from the public school is that we need to train our, we need to educate our kids yes. to be a good person instead of just chasing after success. I think. Exactly. And I, I think that you hit on something else that's very, very critical is that, you know, historically, we used to pray in our classrooms. Yes. We used to use the Bible in our classrooms. One of the first acts of our Congress after the founding of our nation was that they instituted that Bibles should be purchased for the classrooms. Yes. And that is the foundation of our society. As much as you hear people talk, they try to dismiss the fact that many of our founding fathers were Christians and they try to say, oh, they were just deists. You know, they, they didn't really believe in a Christian God. And that's an absolute fallacy. Yeah. Many of those, of course, as you know, were, were Christians. Some of, many of them were pastors. And a lot of the reasons why I believe God gave us our freedom was because they wanted to establish a place where we were free to um, worship our God, right? And that's why all of these different faiths, because all the different colonies were all from different religious kind of like sects. You had the Calvinists, you had the Catholics, you had, you know, the, the more Puritanism uh, types of people. You had all of these different factions of Christianity and as much as they may have disagreed with each other theologically, they all came together to form the United States of America. And so that was a move of God in and of itself. But um, going back to the classroom, we get to teach our children about what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, they remove the Ten Commandments, you know, 
those are the basis for what is right in in our society. And even if you go back further than Christianity, Mm -hmm. if you go back further than um, even Judaism, right? I did a little bit of of art history as well. So there's a Hammurabi's uh, uh, law Mm -hmm. and it was written on stone tablets and they actually found these things and they actually are in, I want to say they're in the... um, in uh, so France, in okay. the uh, oh the museum. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, I yeah. can't, can't think of it. The pyramid. Yes. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. That's yeah. That's the can't pronounce it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the loop. The loop. I've been there. I've seen. I've seen them. But um, that actually, uh, those actually uh, were pre. Abraham, uh-huh. right? And so, and those had a lot of the same sort of, you know, not to steal, not to, you know, do a lot of those things. But then when God established, of course, as you know, um, in, 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 in his word, he established the Ten Commandments. And so those are the foundations for our society, mm-hmm. right? And so we learn that we shouldn't lie. We shouldn't steal, right? We shouldn't covet. Uh, because all of those things lead to sin, right? And if you look at our society right now... Yeah, and we, I, I think uh, the problem is that we as Christians, a lot of us don't know about Ten Commandments and its meaning. Uh, let's say, uh, there shall be no other God uh, uh, except God. A lot of... W- when people get, get asked, hey, why uh, Christian God is so self-centered? Now, all the other religion and Buddhas, they accept like all, all kinds of God. Why? But Christian cannot give a correct answer. What do you think uh, the correct answer should be? Why we our God is the only true God? If you take a look at uh, Muhammad, he didn't claim to be God. Uh-huh. Buddha didn't claim to be God. Uh-huh. And neither of those two... Uh, knew where they were going after death. They were just hoping that they (laughs) were going on the correct path. Thank you for coming today. Thank you, Ethan. Yeah, and I've learned a lot from you. Uh, And uh, please, do you have any more message you want to tell our voters? Yes, absolutely. Um, It's very, very important. It's critical uh, right now that we actually go out and vote. Now, my my desire is oh, that you would yeah, vote at- on election day. Don't uh, mail in your ballot. Take your ballot, your filled out ballot, to uh, the ballot box and give it to them, hand it to them, watch them put it in the ballot box um, and do that. Either vote on the machine on election day. That way they don't have time to prepare uh, uh, to do anything to disqualify your vote because if someone else gets a hold of your absentee ballot and you uh, go ahead and you you uh, go in to vote and they say well you've already voted you can say no I haven't voted and you can say no I am not going to do a provisional ballot because I will try to push a provisional ballot on you Okay. if you do a provisional ballot what happens is that absentee ballot if someone else takes your absentee ballot and votes for for you, and that's not really your vote. That pro- your provisional ballot that you're actually casting at the at the that day uh, at the vote center will not count. So exactly. Wow. Yeah. So you take in your ballot, either filled out ahead of time and drop it off at the vote center, and watch it go into the ballot box, or go in and and, and do it on the machine itself, and take. Make sure that you hold on to your absentee ballot if you don't fill it out ahead of time. Um, mark off on it that you know this is you know you're not using it or it's invalid or whatever, and uh, you can hand it over to them like that. That way, no, nobody else can use your ballot. Wow! So go in and don't don't be dismayed by the fact that thinking that my vote isn't going to count. You know, if Christians go out and vote, we can overwhelm them. We will not, they will not be able to cheat enough to overwhelm us, but we have to go out and force and use our vote. That was God given. God gave us the ability to vote. So if we use that, 
we can overcome. Do it for the Lord. God gave you your vote. Use it. Well, this is a very important message because yes. I think, I think what you're saying is extremely important. God respect our vote. Yes. When, even if he doesn't like it, he respected. Remember the the time that when Israel won the king, and God's like, hey, hey, I'm your king. Yes. Why would you want a king yourself? And at the end, God says, fine, have your king. Yes. And we have that government control us already. So right now we need to elect godly people yes. inside our Congress, inside our uh, state assembly. And remember, uh, voting and we're not choosing a leader to lead us. God is our leader. Yes. And we're choosing a representative. So whatever we're doing, we need to be good. We need to be, uh, we need to work on ourselves and we need to be better and we need to tell others to be free from these oppression and then all these uh, sick minded thinking. And we need represent, we need someone that represent us the best inside our government. So yeah, thank you for coming. Thank you, Ethan. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, put you in the uh, office soon. Oh, I, hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I want to represent you. I want to represent God. Thank you.